Thank you so much, and it's a real honor and pleasure to be here, and um, yeah, a story to try to tell a story. Like, everything I have, like, has a story. I don't even have time to tell you this story, but it's not the story you think, <laughs> okay? Um, everything, uh, I should take my glasses off because my glasses have those uh, Chinatown tran cheap uh, transitional lenses because I'm always losing my glasses. Losing glasses, losing sunglasses. Um, and I'm covered in stories. Uh, There's so many stories I could tell you. And I actually wrote the story I am going to tell you on me so that I can um, talk about it and not take up too much of your time. Um, what I'm gonna talk to you about is the kindness of people and the, the, the kindness of strangers and the, um, the action of instinct that happens as an improviser. Most of my music is, comes from an improvisational core, you know, on the saxophone. Um, and I couldn't decide which story I was gonna tell you depending on the, the energy in the room, which story might you wanna hear. I have so many stories. Uh, and I said I was going to sit, but don't tell my uh, high school music teacher that you saw me sitting with a saxophone. This is so illegal. Um. <laughs> But the kindness of people and the, the, the kind of instinct that you have to have to have a, a kind of improvised art life. And um, my last record is called uh, River Run V, uh, and it's part of this series that you probably know some, somewhat about from um, the great interview that I did uh, for these guys. Um, <laughs> Part of that record is based on a trip that I took, and that was the other thing I couldn't decide this weekend. I could tell you a story about traveling, um, you know, transit, transatlantic traveling that I get to do, and the neat places that I've gotten to go because of improvisation and this horn that's in my hand. Or should I tell you about someplace even more exotic? Before I go into this, are there any Southerners in the room? <laughs> am, I am I dealing with any, you know, Mississippi, shout it out, are you here? Okay, Tennessee, uh, any Tennesseans? Okay, uh, how about Louisianans? Any Louisianans in the room? Okay, all right, New York crowd. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Which means I'll go home safely this evening. Um, no, no, no. Uh, but I decided I would tell you one of the stories from the trip that I took through the South uh, last year, hashtag Southern Sojourn 2014. I'm, that's, hashtags are ridiculous, but I do use them. And so if you wanna see more about that trip and read more about the trip, the stories that I took on that trip, just put that hashtag into Google and you'll find more. I used to write zines um, and I used to kind of keep travel journals that I used to share with people and I've started doing it online a little bit. Now, now I just, I'm so torn with the way technology has kind of taken over parts of our lives that I just can't decide what I wanna do with some of those stories. So anyway, hashtag Southern Sojourn 2014. Um, <laughs> That's your pitch. When I do this, can you sing that pitch for me? And when I put my arm down, you don't have to sing it. Huh? Okay, that will help me with telling this story. Okay, I do this with different crowds in different places and it's always so interesting. I did it in Vienna once and it was like four-part harmony. It was, <laughs> you know, 
show offs. It was awesome. <laughs> um. <laughs> So the kindness of strangers. So I decided that I was going to take this trip, and it was going to happen over almost four week period, and that I was going to go to three of the main states that kind of run through this series that I'm doing called Coin Coin. I'm obsessed with American history, obsessed with American history because it's so so messed up. <laughs> It's just there's so many things about American history you're like, wow, that happened. How did we get through that to this, you know? There's so many lessons and there's so many beautiful stories and I, I just love the stories. So I went to, as I said, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Louisiana and I traveled by um, my comfort zone level. Sounds awesome. And so my comfort zone level, in terms of dealing with the South, as you know, an African-identified looking black woman, but I, you know, I'm Irish, English, Scottish, French, Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw, uh, recently found out a smidgen Polynesian. What is, where did that happen? Um, <laughs> that's a whole other story. I took, I took all of the DNA tests that are on the market, But that's for another night. I have to tell you those stories. Those are crazy stories. So I had to arrange the states that I was going by comfort level. And as an improviser, you know, you figure out what feels good. And the one thing that improvisation has taught me over and over again, and that has transferred well into the life of this, the, the life of an artist is a life of privilege. I feel very privileged. But this life of privilege that you learn time and time again is that eventually whatever problem that you're having, <laughs> will resolve itself. And this is where instinct comes in. So I was supposed to take this trip over the summer because I didn't want to travel um, by myself. I wanted to travel with a friend. And I am a class, I mean, I'm from Chicago, but I'm a classic New Yorker in that I don't, I mean, I have driven some vehicles illegally in the city. It is true. <laughs> don't tell. Um, this is probably going online. Don't tell. But, uh, and I, I said, well, you know, I'll go with a friend and I'll let him do the driving and, you know, just tell them where to go, or maybe I'll like, you know, practice some of my driving and maybe, but it just wasn't working out to where our schedules could align, and then I got all these cancellations for some shows that I was supposed to do in Mexico City, um, and I woke up one morning and I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I, I gotta go, I gotta go, like my instinct just kept saying, I gotta go, I gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go now. So I literally bought my ticket to go, didn't buy my ticket to come back, just figured, you know, I kind of chart, I kind of knew where I wanted to go, but I didn't know exactly, and I figured, you know, with the internet, you can go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I left um, on that instinct, and I booked everything Greyhound, Amtrak. Uh, I did cheat by flying to Tennessee from New York. I feel like it's kind of a cheat, you know, I'm dealing with American history, and the way my family made it from, uh, you know, the South, to points north as they took the train. And I wanted to kind of recreate that, but I was a little lazy on the, on the first, uh, on, the, on the start. And um, I started in Tennessee because Tennessee was kind of comfortable for me. I'd been there a couple times before. My grandmother and her sisters are from Tennessee and I had so much love for them and so many amazing memories of being in their presence that I knew going to Tennessee I'd feel okay. You know, because I have a lot of family that left the South to never go back ever again in this life. And the fact that I would even want to visit some of those places, you know, like, it's just like, why would you want to do that? You live in New York City. But no place has ever been exotic to me as Jackson, Mississippi, versus, you know, I've been to Paris, I've been to London, I've been to Ireland, I've been to all these interesting places, and no place is exotic for me, and those places aren't really exotic, but exotic for me as the American South. So I started in Tennessee, and then 
I put Mississippi in the middle because as far as comfort level goes, um, Mississippi was the scariest for me in terms of dealing with American history. Mississippi was the scariest for me, uh, but it was also the state within my lineage that I don't know a lot about. I am a lucky American that I can trace my ancestry, at least on one side, back to, I'm now back to a baptismal record of a baby girl in Virginia, uh, 1670, you know? Um, and the reason that I have that information is because I stand before you as a descendant of a business upon which there is a paper trail. That's the one great thing about America and business the paper trail. Um, and so I went to Mississippi. Um, yeah. And one of the most beautiful things about the South is how beautiful, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous it is the terrain, the colors, the sounds, you know, so much so that it seemed, for me as a descendant from these places, how painful it must have been for family members to leave places so beautiful that were still so terrorizing. And so I put Louisiana on the end, I ended in New Orleans, um, because Louisiana to me, as far as American history goes, is kind of like the cherry on top of the Sunday of dealing with the parts of my own ancestry, but the parts of that Southern history that I love. Some of these strangest things were possible um, for American people of all colors in the state of Louisiana because there was so much illegal stuff going on. It's just so, it's like amazing. Ama I'm so glad they did not have the internet. Can you imagine what would happen if they had the internet? Um. <laughs> And again, hashtag Southern Sojourn 2014. You can find more stories and photos. I took over 5,000 photos and video that I hope to use in some of my own visual work and my own scores. <laughs> Mississippi. So I went to a three different places in Mississippi, and one of the places I went to, there was one of the biggest major um, civil right, uh, civil rights, uh, civil war fights um, in this one tiny town. And they have a huge uh, civil war um, cemetery, and I also went and watched some reenactments. I, man, reenactments. <laughs> the civil war. And no offense to, you know, the one thing that I learned about being a, in that part of the United States is still how hurt Southerners still feel in terms of how they've been placed in history. And I think that's a really important thing to remember. You know, the Union, they weren't, you know, angels. I mean, if we were really to look at that war, and the Confederacy, of course, no angels, they're never angels in war. Um, but I love that war because I feel that it was probably, probably the last honest war in some sense. And you can argue with me. That's just how I feel. In terms of the, the, the strategy and the way in which soldiers were so ill-equipped um, to fight, in those battles. And so I was in this one tiny town and it had this, these huge, this huge Civil War cemetery. And as a traveler, the kindness of strangers is really what you have to depend on. And there I was by myself. Um, the kindness of strangers. I did get a few, you know, uh, uncomfortable, you know, radars going off in my head, like, yep, yep, I don't, you know, I, we're not 
this is not, you know, 1952, but this person obviously thinks that it is, and so I'm gonna go that way and let them go that way. Uh, I did have some of those experiences, but overall, I kept meeting all these kind, kind people. <laughs> And I really was a New Yorker in these places, which is hysterical. Like it's, you know, there are parts of the South that are very much, you know, reminds me of um, LA in terms of car culture, right? And so this cemetery was the Civil War cemetery you're supposed to drive. You're supposed to drive through, you know, and they told me, and I was like, drive? Why would I wanna drive through, you know, a place where uh, this major um, fight took place? I want to experience, you know, what it was like to walk the terrain and what was so amazing about the cemetery is the terrain was really scary. It was really hilly and cavernous and uh, um, I can't imagine running up and down hills and, and trying to get into the nooks and crannies there, trying to run and, and help people or hurt people. I couldn't imagine what that was like. So I spent, you know, maybe two to three hours in the cemetery park and um, cars would pass me by and look at me like, what is wrong with, I just wanna say New Yorker. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker and we walk. You know, that's what we do, we know how to walk. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm feeling really good and, and I get out of the cemetery. <laughs> And unfortunately, and I have favorite cemeteries in New York City too, Woodlawn Cemetery up in the Bronx, all those musicians and artists buried there, um, Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn. But I'm the type of person when I go to a cemetery, I feel like uh, the people buried there, when you walk past their grave, you should actually acknowledge, you know, you're looking at somebody's grave, you should say something. I'm sure they would be happy to hear, you know, someone say something you know, as you walk by. And so on this whole trip, you know, I was going to really old cemeteries where I literally would have to dust off gravestones and kind of straighten things up for people. That's the saddest thing. God, please have me cremated. I don't wanna be cremated, throw me in an ocean. Um, and so just going to these cemeteries saying hello to all these very young men, very young Americans who all believed in something and had hope for something. Um, and I just started daydreaming. <laughs> and just really taking it on as an improvisation, right? An improvisatory walk. And I covered the whole park. The whole park, it was huge. Um, and I get to the end and it's, uh, about closing time and they have a separate building where there's a little information desk and I go in to buy you know, a postcard, maybe take a photo. Um, I also you know, kept the log online because I, you know, I, I use these tools also if I'm traveling by myself uh, so people can track me <laughs> in case I go missing. <laughs> you know, that's a real. I grew up in an age where I was told that black women didn't get looked for if they got lost, you know? It's changed now, that's changed now. Um, but I find these digital tools useful in, you know, say, hey, okay, she was in blah, 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 and traveling through the South looking like my, you know, looking like this. And you know, before I went down there thinking, ah, oh, maybe I should, you know, should I wear a burqa? You know, what should I be do? <laughs> you know, should I, you know, should I know that's probably not a good idea? You know, what should I do? Um, how should I cover up? You know, no, I just go down there and be myself and be open and be kind. Another thing that improvisation teaches you to be open to the moment and ready for the moment. So I'm coming out of the cemetery and I go into the little office there and um, I'm digging through my bag for money to pay for something and I notice, now like I said, I'm a, I have issues with technology so I'm actually not a smartphone person, I'm not like a this all the time, but for this trip I bought one of those kind of burner smartphones because I figured I should, you know, <laughs> I need, just in case I need to get in touch with someone um, and literally I was, 
hooking up this trip while traveling. So I needed to have, you know, be able to call and to um, find people because I don't have a lot of family left in the South. Everybody left, you know? Um, and so I'm digging in my bag for money and notice that the phone is gone. Almost done with this story, sorry. And I notice that the phone is gone and I'm just beside myself, like, oh no. You know, what am I gonna do, how, you know? And I'm trying to explain to the ladies and they're like, well, you can come back tomorrow morning. I was like, no, I'm supposed to be on a 6 a.m. bus, Greyhound bus. I think I was going to Alexandria, Louisiana next. I was like, I can't, I have to, um, I can't skip a day, you know, is there something that someone could do? And she's like, well, we're getting ready to close. And luckily, my New Yorker side did not come out. <laughs> so, I mean, my New Yorker side walked, but my New Yorker, you know, we can be a little aggro. And I really, I thank God that my, whatever I have left of Midwesternness came to, you know, that honest Midwestern, you know, just kind of groveling, like, oh, woe is me, <laughs> thing that we're very, which Midwesterners are very good at while they lie to you. Like, they can, <laughs> as to any Midwesterners in the room, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just, you know, what am I gonna do? And, you know, should I, like, crack a tear? Am I, I'm gonna crack a tear. And she's like, look, I'll, you know, I'll call Ranger Patty. And I, this is the first time I had heard this name, Ranger Patty, and I'm just thinking, okay, Ranger Patty, oh. Okay, Ranger Patty, and so this woman comes, and she's maybe my mother's age, um, redhead, really kind face, in her uniform, and she was kind of gruff because it was closing time, and I was trying to explain to her, like, I'm really, really sorry, and this is my situation, and I'm traveling by myself, and she was uh, kind of gruff. And I didn't really listen, listen when she said, you know, get in, go get in the truck. And so she had a truck outside. And so I went and got in the truck, and she, you know, I didn't put my seatbelt on at first, and she chastised me for, I said, put your seatbelt on, you know, we could have an accident. And she said, okay, I'm going to drive you through the park. And she was like, we're going to get in the park, and you're going to tell me which way you walked, which I had no idea <laughs> at all, like, which way? And so she took me around every nook and cranny of the park. And I thought it had been, I thought it was gone forever. I thought it was gone forever. Um, and then she doubled back around to the start of the park. And there was my jacket that I had dropped along with the phone that was in the, you know, in the jacket. I could see it as clear as day. I obviously, I dropped it right in the beginning. Because again, this park was so beautiful. This cemetery, this fighting ground, this place in history that was so important was so beautiful. I was just stunned that that's what I was looking at. And, um, there were just so many things racing through my head about what it had to be like to be an American during that time, trying to fight for something that um, today we wouldn't quite fight for in the same way, you know? Uh, and, and slavery is not over. It's happening, as I sit here and talk to you, it's happening to someone somewhere around the world. History just shifts to different places and that's why I kind of, I'm obsessed with it. Um, and so, on, this, on these travels, because I've toured as a musician and I've stayed in some of the greatest places, some really nice places, but I also know how to roll around in some of the dirtiest, nastiest places on the planet as a touring musician. And I've stayed in this uh, motel in, in this little Mississippian town where literally the moment you walk you know, along the grounds, you just know someone got hurt. You know, that feeling, that instinct, again, that improvisation gives you that feeling. Um, and so I got in the car with Ranger Patty, and she was like, you know, I'll take you back to your, your motel. She's very sweet. And so we're driving. <laughs> And she starts to loosen up. 
And this is finally the time that I am able to clue into what she sounds like. And I'm trying to figure out like, wow, okay, I've never really spent that much time in Mississippi. And I was just in Tennessee and maybe like the sounds of Southern accents, I'm just not, you know, completely getting. And then finally I turned to her and I said, well, what part of Mississippi are you from? And she starts laughing, cackling, cackling and laughing and laughing. And she goes, you know, and I can't do a really good impersonation, but she goes, you know, you can, you can take the goyle out of Long Island, but you can't take <laughs> the Long Island out of the goyle. <laughs> and at that moment, at that moment, that moment was so amazing because I was like, wow the kindness of people. I had no idea that she was actually a New Yorker, you know? And she lamented, she, it was awesome, she lamented about, well, you know, you have an accent that sounds like you could be from anywhere, but for someone like me, you know, it's impossible, and it's impossible to explain to people here, you know, where it is I come from, so, and that's why I wanted to help you. So that's my story. Postscript to this story, as I haven't really touched on the instinct of improvisation. Like for instance, the melodies that I've just played for you, I've come up with on the spot from the, all this loving and kind of energy that you all are sending back to me. I can feel that. That is something that's very special. Um, I'm still not as good, as it, good at it as, other, as, as some master musicians that I know, but I hope to, get to that level at some point. And postscript to that story is, remember I said, uh, I woke up um, that one day in February saying, oh, I gotta go. I don't know why I have to take this trip now. Maybe because I have these cancellations. Why I have to take this trip now, but I have to take it now, 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 now. Well, two weeks in that tr into that trip, I was in Louisiana and I was, that's, I wish I had time to tell that story. I had to take a limousine into that town. That's a whole other story. That's a crazy story. And the phone rings and I go to my email and I have you know like 50 emails, people ask me if I'm okay, where am I, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out my favorite green market where I was living at the time uptown was right next to the Harlem explosion. And so I just put that to say that, that instinct is everything and when you get a gut feeling that you need to do something or you need to be somewhere, that is something that you're supposed to take. And that same instinct allows you to be open and allows people to be open to you and to help you the way Ranger Patty helped me. <laughs> Thank you.